Um, okay, so as you can see here, Medical Alert, we work, we're actually, we're also working in collaboration with Thames Valley Police on our Safe and Found program, which um, um, supports people predominantly living with dementia and their carers um, with regards to the um, walking with purpose, wondering but they may become confused about their location if someone's reported as a missing person. And we're helping Thames Valley Police to return those people home safely and quickly. Now, it's really important piece of work for us. So we've looked at the, the research. Um, many of you may know that there's over 940, almost a million people in the country living with dementia. Um, and that number is, is increasing every year, um, predominantly because um, people are living longer, more people are now being diagnosed. That's diagnosed people. There's probably higher than that people who are yet to be diagnosed. Um, and of those, um, of those million people, 40,000 of those people will be reported missing for the first time every year. So it's, it's a huge challenge for the emergency services and for carers and for the people living with dementia to keep these people safe. Um, or as safe as they, we possibly can. Um, and, and how we help with that is we, as I said previously, we, we've collaborated with Thames Valley Police um, to make sure that um, the, the people living with dementia, that their most vital information is shared with emergency services as quickly as possible. Um, in, in regards to um, dementia, that's predominantly um, the Herbert Protocol, which um, I could, I'll come on to that in a moment if you guys aren't aware of what that is. Um, essentially, it's a, it's a form that the emergency services use. It's a profile of that person who's living with dementia. And what it does is really help the emergency service narrow down the search area when they're looking for that person. And essentially that then increases the chances of them finding them really quickly and returning them back to where they should be, back to their loved ones. Um, in, in the past, um, paper copies of the Herbert Protocol had been used um, and they may be stored in somebody's front room or in the, in the kitchen drawer, for example, and, and they're quite difficult to keep up to date. Um, and the, uh, the police force have told us that, um, well, they informed us that quite often, even if somebody has filled out the form, they've kept it in a, in a it's not a very accessible place and it, it takes a while for it to be presented to the police force. Um, and, and another important factor of, of the Herbert Protocol is it takes away a lot of the stress of that moment in crisis so if somebody's been reported missing, the loved ones are already really worried about that person. You know, is there any harm come to them? Where are they? How do we get them back safely? You know, are they okay? All of that. Um, it, and then to maybe answer questions from the police force about, you know, what's their habits? Where do they usually go? You know, what's previous addresses? All of these things. Having to remember that in a moment of crisis is, is in itself really stressful for that person. So having that information pre-recorded, stored somewhere safely and easily accessible is really, really important. So for those of you who aren't aware of what the Home Protocol is, I explained a bit of it previously. So as I mentioned, it's used by the police to narrow down the search areas. So it was, um, it was produced by the police force. Norfolk Police Force introduced the Herbert Protocol um, in 2011, I think it was, off the top of my head. Don't quote me on that, please. Um, and it was actually, it's named after a gentleman called George Herbert, who um, had dementia. Um, and he was a, a D-Day landing veteran as well, by the way. Um, he unfortunately didn't come home safely after he'd gone out, got confused about his location and, and, you know, the worst thing happened there. So the police then thought, hold on a moment, we, we really need to do something about this because they can see that this is a problem that 
could get bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, what they want to do is find people and return them home safely. Um, so it's really important that if you are looking after someone or living with dementia, um, that you fill out a copy of the Herbert Protocol, keep it up to date and keep it in a place where it's easy accessible. Um, and it's really key that what the police force and us are asking people to do is be proactive about people's safety. So what they often find is that um, waiting, most people take action after that first moment of crisis. So the person, they're, they're absolutely fine for ages. You know, there's no no indication that they might go off and, and go off on a walk and, and, you know, not come back or be reported missing. Uh, and then all of a sudden it happens one day and that moment of crisis happens. And that's generally the moment where families, carers, um, support people are driven to take action because they see the trauma that it can it can cause. Um, and, and that's a really, really important um, piece of, of this puzzle or this solution is that it's all about being proactive about people's safety. Um, the Herbert Protocol, by the way, you can you can Google that. You can find um, copies of it uh, mainly. On, they will be on police websites. Um, you can also do that through our website. So where we are coming in to change the current process, because um, the police force do not have a way or are unable or unwilling, shall we say, to store people's personal information. Um, unless, of course, you've committed a crime and then you'll be in the system, which people living with dementia do not fall into that category. Um, but it's really important. So what we do here at Medical Alert is we provide um, a place to securely store your most vital medical information. And in this case, the Herbert Protocol with us and make it easily accessible to the to the emergency services. Yes, so there's, so we've been in conversation with Thames Valley Police, as you know, their missing persons team, and with the Alzheimer's Society to talk about the Herbert Protocol, how we can work together to make this process more accessible for people living with dementia. Um, and we we came across the, we. We develop these five main stages for um, when somebody gets reported missing. So the, the first stage is obviously, as I chat, chatted about earlier, is being proactive about someone's safety. You know, fill out the form, keep it somewhere safe. Ideally, keep it with medical alert. If not, keep it somewhere safe. Make sure everybody knows where it is. Make sure the information's up to date and good to go. And if you've got a, a um, an up-to-date photograph of someone as well, we, we can store that. So that's obviously really useful information should someone, you know, should the police force be looking for someone. Um, and then it's speedy reporting of a missing person. Now, this is really interesting. And, and the police think this is because of television, um, that a lot of people think you have to wait 24 hours or 12 hours before you can report somebody missing. That is just simply not the case. The, the guidance from Thames Valley Police's missing persons team is as soon as you think somebody's missing or they're not where they should be, you should pick up the phone and report them straight away. The reason for that is it's, they, would, they would much rather find somebody 10, 15 minutes around the corner or you know there's a, there's a bigger window for someone to have travelled further and potentially put themselves at risk. So that's a really, really key part of this um, solution. Um, the investigation itself, um, obviously, I'm not a police officer, but from what I've learned from talking with them, it's it's very, very complicated. There's a lot of people involved. Um, so if there's, they may have to put the helicopter up, for example, to look for someone. They, um, in t it's typical, there'll be 20 to 30 police officers involved in a missing persons investigation. Um, 
if there's any water nearby, they need to put the boat out just to make sure. You know, all of these things are huge, and it's um, it, it's it's a it has a real impact on the resources of the emergency services. Now, if we can reduce that impact by providing with them with information about that person, um, with regards to their habits. Um, previous addresses, places they're likely to go, so on and so forth, so they can reduce that search area. That reduces that that pressure on that resource and, and actually enables emergency services to carry on with other, other duties. Um, then, of course, there's what we hope is a safe return home. Um, a little caveat on that, of course, is unfortunately some people don't get returned home safely. Um, and the data from missing persons um, investigations is that um, almost everyone who is involved in a missing, if, if you go missing, has some kind of trauma after the event. And that may be physical, but may also be mental trauma as well. So it's really important that um, people are found as quickly as possible and return to home. Um, and then, of course, there's the recovery. So it's really important, should there have been a missing persons investigation or someone returned safely, that time is taken to recover for that person. And that's not just the, the individual themselves, it's the family, it's the carers. You know, everybody needs to, you know, take time to recover from the situation, but also then to start Putting, if you haven't been proactive previously, putting putting steps in place to um, help ensure the safety of the person that you care for. Um, the Herbert Protocol is predominantly for people living with dementia, but Medical Alert is available to any medical condition. So hopefully that covers. Yeah, that was helpful. Covers. Thank you. I'll, I'll come. I'll come on to that again. Um, in a while as well, actually. So this is quickly how it works for us. The the missing person team in the in the uh, police force contact us directly as soon as they've had someone reported missing to see whether or not we we hold any information on them. We obviously clarify that they are a police officer before we share any information, and then we share that with them so they can move on with their um, investigations. So it's really quite quick. I, I think I've pro probably covered most of that slide, um, unless there's any other questions on there. So um, this is a this is an interesting slide. So this is what our IDs actually look like. So to give you an idea of how it works, um, there's over seventy different styles that you can choose from. So we hope this. There's something that suits everyone. We've got some more practical ones that are perhaps more robust, and we've got some ones that are really quite nice that look like some jewellery as well for those people. So, you know, what does a, an ID look like? Um, so as you can see, across the top, this is another important part of our service as well, is our 24-7 emergency helpline. So our emergency helpline is open 24 hours, seven days a week. So, you know, wherever or whenever the emergency situation is, we are there to provide that information to whoever's requesting it. And as I say, we put checks in place to make sure we're not just giving it to anyone on the street. So, you know, we'll take policemen's numbers, um, we'll take paramedics' PIN numbers, um, we take a phone number so we can call them back should the call drop, you know, all of those things. We put some checks in place to make sure that we are giving it to the right people. Um, and again, it's got, we've got a hundred different dialects as well uh, in on the emergency helpline. So if, if, if you happen to be in a foreign country, something happens, we've got a translation service for you as well. Or if you don't speak English, that's available for you, for everyone as well. Um, also on the ID at the bottom, you see a number that starts with GB. That's um, your unique membership number. So that helps us identify who you are in the system so we share the right information. And then as you can see in the middle there is 
um, your most relevant and vital medical information. And in this case, it's type 1 diabetes, ICD, allergic to penicillin, and on, um, on, on a medication. Um, as you can see, the, the, me the medical record is central to it. The ID um, points to that, the 24-hour, seven-day emergency helpline, nurse checks records, the charity part we've, we've talked about as well. There is a wallet card. There is a, an electronic wallet card as well that you can store on your phone um, for quick and easy access, which can be quite useful um, in a clinical situation. So if you're, again, if you have a rare condition, you may be going to lots of different and seeing lots of different clinicians, you can bring it up on your phone uh, and show it to them, which, is, which can, I know can be quite useful. Um, oh, oh, this is a video. I mean, I don't know if I show this one. So Peter Berry, he's living with dementia. He's a member, joined our thing, joined the um, joined the program. Um, and one of the key phrases we got from him is that uh, a diagnosis of dementia is not just for the individual, it's for the whole family. And I think that's a, a really important message because um. And, that, and I think that can be for any medical condition. I think carers often get often get forgotten in the conversation. Um, a lot of the focus is on the individual, especially you know as you move through the condition. And um, there was one other thing I hadn't mentioned actually. It's that we also have an ID for carers. So um, if you're caring for somebody uh, with a with a complex medical condition, you too can um, have an ID. Uh, you can be the advocate on their on their account, on their membership, um, but you too can have an ID that simply says something like, I'm the carer of a vulnerable person. So should something happen to you when you're out going the shops or whatever you may walking the dog or something like that, people will know that there's a vulnerable person at home or to look after. And then we can provide um so we have we can store your in case of emergency plans um we can call next of kin we can provide all of that stuff for you as well just to help keep those people safe so they might you know information like phil's at home he needs someone needs to check on him at four o'clock every day or whatever it may be you know and he's on certain medication 